Hello and thanks for watching this tutorial video. This is a video in which I'm going to explain how I set a template up for recording voiceover recordings, particularly audiobook recordings, in Logic Pro X or Logic Pro 10. Um, as a voiceover artist, it's important to have uh, a good, clear kind of workflow, and I'm just going to take you through how I set up Logic when I'm recording. Um, now what I do is I set up templates, I've got loads of templates in different folders for all different kinds of work that I do, whether it be commercial, audiobook, um, or whatever kind of work it is that I might be recording, um, just so that if I'm recording 15, 20 different projects a day I can quickly and easily go straight into the kind of setup that I like to record in for that particular project and I'm away and I don't have to do any setting up or anything like that. So what I'm going to show you right now is a very simple, very clean, efficient interface for recording on Logic, um, and hopefully it might be of some use to you. Um, a few points about Logic before I go into it. Um, Logic is primarily a kind of music composition or music arrangement door, and um, it's not one of the, mo the more popular ones for voiceover recording, but I absolutely love it. I use Audition, I use Pro Tools as well, but I prefer Logic for um, recording voiceovers because when you set it up as you want it and save it as a template it's very simple very streamlined and the options are there to be able to add music in as backing tracks or composition this that the other so the first thing you do when you open up logic you'll get a, an image like this um, I click into empty project there it this little interface may look slightly different depending on the version of logic that you're using this is the most up-to-date version uh, so we go choose you want to make sure that your input device here is set to um, the preamp that you're using. It might say, like built-in microphone for example, um, I'm using a Focusrite ISO 1, but it's called itself Sapphire here. And then we get Logic, which opens here. So now instead of this image here, what you might get is a picture of a microphone or a singer, a picture of some drums. You might get the images of these options here instead of the description. I don't know why sometimes it gives you those images, sometimes it gives you this. Um, but in this instance we're going to go for audio. Now our input on mine is input 11, that's where my ISO 1 is there. On yours it may well be input 1 and your output 1, 2 or whichever one it is, you'll need to know these. Everything else absolutely fine, sapphire there, sapphire there, number of tracks, one. I only want to create one track because I'm creating a track for voiceover and it's generally just me recording voiceovers here. Now there's a few other things I want to change here. I'll go up here, up at the top. I don't need to see what key I'm in, what time signature I'm in, because I'm not writing music, I'm not singing, I'm recording voice, so. There we go, I want to go down to time, because I need a timestamp. As I said, I don't need key signatures. Over here, this waveform will be very small. If I just record something, okay, we're getting the metronome count in there. You see this waveform is very small. I don't want that. I actually want to make it bigger. And go, there we go, and now we can see a bit of the waveform. Um, I'll actually just record a bit more, just so you can see something to record on. If I go over here, this button makes the waveform a little bit bigger. If you can see that, so I'll stop now. Makes it a bit clearer to see, so I'll leave that clicked on. What else do I do to create a voiceover track? Down here, these two signals, uh, symbols indicate that it's outputting in stereo. Well, because I'm recording a single track in mono here, I want output in mono, so just like that. Click it, it goes to a single circle, I'm in mono. If I click it again, I get a double track there. Click this one, we'll get a double track there, you can see that there. So let's get rid of these, don't need that right now. One thing I'm going to do on another tutorial video is show you how to set up a punch and roll recording for Logic Pro, which you can easily do. And the system works brilliantly. 
Um, you can hear as much or as little of the pre-roll as you want. You select your input point, your punch-in point. It starts recording seamlessly from that point and carries on until you make another mistake. That's particularly useful if you're recording audiobooks. However, um, it does require a bit of setup. And once it's set up, you can save it as a template. So I'll do that on another video. Uh, there's some other things up here I want to check. So if you... I'm using a trackpad, so it's just a double tap with two fingers, but it might be a right click up here. Customize control bar and display, and we get all these options. So I'm not going to go into what all of the options necessarily do. I'm just going to tick the ones that I have set up. Um, because these are the ones that I use when I'm recording a bog standard basic voiceover with no stacks or plugins or any kind of anything like that. These, this is yeah, that all looks good. That's how I like it. I don't need that. I don't need counting one, two, three, four. We get rid of that. Um, over here, smart. Change that down to samples, so we've got more control over our edits. X fade samples. That all looks good. Here, right click in here. I don't want to see this boring thing. You can change that if you want there. It's your microphone. If you're doing, if it's for voiceover, you can put a custom image. So I do a custom image. There's my logo. Why do I have that? Well, as I say, I might be recording 15, 20 different projects a day. I might be doing an e-learning one. Now I've got an e-learning template. I've got a commercial template. I've got an audiobook template. So very quickly, if I kind of minimize or go between different um, windows, I can tell instantly what kind of projects I'm working on. And then, oh, yeah, that's that uh, commercial I was working on. I'll go back in there and edit it. So very quickly, I just get an image there. Um, another thing I can do here, if I right click, not right click, sorry, right click over here, assign track color. And we can assign a track color. What use is this? So let's have a nice, uh, this color purple. That one, there we go. Why do we want a color like that? Well, it's simply it's simply the same thing. If I've got a, a load of recordings that I've made, and as you can see, this recording is picking up my input here. Stop. I can see straight away by the color of this. That's that's audio. That's an audio book I've been recording there, um, without having to go anywhere else. I think that's generally it. A very nice, short and sweet introduction. This is your pre-fader metering. You got that clicked on. Very quick, short and sweet introduction on how to set up a basic template for recording in Logic Pro. The most important thing, I should have said this right at the beginning, um, if you can't see samples and X fade and a few other options here, the first thing you need to do is go up here to Preferences, Advanced Tools, and make sure all of your advanced tools are enabled. And that's it. Then you can go to File, Save as a Template, before you save it as a template, make sure you haven't got any audio in there. Save as a template. I'm going to call it um, my my brilliant template. There we go. Lovely. Now I'll get rid of Logic. Don't save it. Let's go in straight away again. Logic Pro. Open. What do I want to do? Open a template. Where's my brilliant template? There it is. And here we are. So I'm good to go. I hit record. Straight away it's just recording. No counting, no nothing like that. Straight into voiceover recording in the template that I want. Now if you wanted to, you could uh, go over here and you could you could build up your stack of buses and plugins and things like that, depending on um, how you like to record. As I say, this is just a very clean interface, a very clean easy way of recording with no enhancements, no processing, no built-in stacks, nothing like that. It's just a very good way of getting you up and running without any settings or configurations that are going to kind of overcomplicate it. So once you've got something like this set up, you're good to go. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos on uh, Logic. I hope this was useful. I'm going to, be, as I say, the next one will be on punch and roll. And I'll be doing some others on different elements of recording voiceovers within the Logic platform. Thanks very much, and hit subscribe.